In this video, I'll describe two different workflows you can use when working on a group assignment. So this is a flowchart of how group assignments will work. First of all, the instructor will create a class GitLab repo. That's the original. That's the one that the instructor creates. And then they will fork or copy a version of that repo to the team lead. Now, let's say your group has four, four people in it. The person that happens to be listed first in the file with all the GitLab tokens will be selected as the team lead. There's nothing special about that. It just happens to be that that person is listed first in the file. And so that person then has a copy of the repo on GitLab, so on the server. So how will the team lead work with that repo? By, as usual, cloning it, making changes, saving them, staging them, committing them, and then pushing them back. However, in this case, the team lead is going to be working with other team members. And those team members are also going to be responsible for making changes to the same repo. So this is the team leads repo, the copy made by the instructor. And the other group members will be cloning that repo, making changes to it, saving, staging, committing, and pushing them back up to the repo. Now, if you've already watched the video on merge conflicts, you know you have to be a little bit careful to ensure that two people are not making changes to the same lines in the same file at the same time. Okay, so this is the basic structure of how group assignments will work. And I'm going to show you how this would look if you're working on a group project and what you can do to ensure that the collaboration works smoothly and you don't run into merge conflicts. All right, so here is my list of projects and you'll notice that one has been added. And in contrast to the other repos that are here, it doesn't start with my username. In fact, it starts with the name of the person who is in my group okay? and it is in fact listed as the team lead. So this is user BBB111. And so that person is the team lead and they will make a copy of the uh, repo and clone that to their laptop and work on it. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to clone as usual, get information about where the repo is, go into our studio, start to get gadget, clone tab, paste in the information and click on clone. And again, possibly at the exact same time, the team lead or other team members are doing the same thing. All right. So here is the assignment. What is the idea? The idea is just very straightforward. We're just going to add information from each team lead similar to what you would have done in the uh, uh, individual assignment practice. But now here's the idea is that each group member is going to provide their own information. Own information. So there's two workflows that I'm going to recommend. On one hand, what we could do is simply in this file, each provide our name, uh, last name, first name, and favorite food, and then merge them together. Okay, so let's try that. I am not the team lead, so I'm going to put my name here. First name, and my favorite food. Okay, so I'm going to save that change. And now the team lead will presumably add their information on the copy that they made of the repo and add their name, first name, last name, and favorite food as well. All right. So now that's one approach. Now, as you saw in the merge conflict video, it's possible that if we make changes to the same file, that Git will get confused and not know which changes has, have precedence. So the alternative approach is the following. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. There's an option in our Markdown documents, which we're working on now, to pull in different files that are ch children of the overall R Markdown document. So I'll explain this more in detail in class. But what we're going to do here is we're actually going to make changes in different files and absorb those or include those into the larger R Markdown document. So here we're referring to four different files, info member one, two, three, four. 
And so I am, let's say, info, uh, going to provide information in info member two. Let's open that up. I'm going to provide my last name, first name, and there we go. And now what I can do is I've made my changes in two different places. So both of these are two different workflows. The one workflow is I'll use the same file, but then we have to be careful about merge conflicts, or we each use different files and then include them as we're generating the final HTML document from the R Markdown file. Okay, so I've made my changes now. Let's go and check in Git. Yep, here they are. So I've made changes to info member two. Right? I've made my changes, added first name, last name, and favorite food. And also in the single file, which is going to produce the overall HTML that we're going to submit. Now again, at the same time, the team lead is going to do the same thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video and see if the team lead has made their changes. And after that's done, I'll be back in the video. Okay, so Ricky, who is my teammate on this practice assignment, has committed his changes. And so now I'm going to commit mine and hopefully everything will work fine. Let's see. So I have here the changes that I made to info member one. Ricky will, as the team lead, will have made changes to info member one. And then I also made changes in practice assignment uh, as group member two. I've added my name and my favorite food. And so now I'm going to stage both of those changes and say, This is my commit. So I'm going ahead and click on commit. Again, that takes a snapshot of the changes that I've made. And now I'm going to try to push those up to the server. Now, the same thing is happening that happened when we were faced with a merge conflict is that there are changes on the server that we don't have locally. Okay. And so we need to make sure that those get combined together properly. So if you're working in a group, the thing you should always do before you start working on um, an assignment on a repo is pull all the latest changes down before you make your own changes. So let's do that. Pull changes. And let's see if Git is able to merge the changes that we made, right, to team lead and myself. And it looks like it was, right? So it auto merged the different documents. Uh, it didn't have any trouble with info member one or info member two because those were two different files. But both the team lead and I made changes to practice assignment.rmd. And so let's see how those ended up being merged. So let's take a look here. Scroll up. Okay. So this is what I would call workflow number one, where both group members in this case made changes to the same file. They were not at the same lines though, right? So Ricky made changes on lines 43 through 45, and I made changes on lines 49 through 51. And so because they were, even though they're the same file, not the same lines, this didn't turn out to be a problem. The alternative approach is to change information in separate files. So I added my information here. And uh, when I was working on this file, info member one would not have had any information in it. But now because I've pulled the information, let's open up that file, I can see that the information is contained here, right? So this is the information, the data that Bobby and entered into his file as he was submitting it to GitLab. So now there's no, no merged conflicts, no problems. Uh, the workflow two approach is slightly safer because you're working on separate files, but it's possible to combine all the information together in one. So let's go ahead and knit this file and see what we get. So let's scroll down. Yep, this is going to be our HTML file. It looks like the information was combined nicely. And then workflow two, this looks exactly the same, but how did we get this information? By pulling together data that was part of two separate files. So info member one and info member two were included into the master document. So now let's do our final commit so that we also have the HTML file. HTML. Go ahead and commit that. And now we can go ahead and push all our changes to GitLab.
And this time that was successful. All right, so just to wrap up here, when you're faced with a group project, what the instructor will do is create a class repo, make a copy of that for the team lead, and give multiple people access to that repo. So the team lead will make a copy of that, a clone of the team repo, and make changes, save, stage, commit, and push. And the same thing with team members. Now there is some level of coordination that is involved and required to ensure that we don't have merge conflicts. But with a little bit of planning, that shouldn't be a problem. So now as a last step, let's just double check that all the information we want is available on the server. Just refreshing. Okay, here's the HTML file. Let's check the different files. This is the file that Ricky Bobby created. This is the file that I edited. And this is the file that we both edited. Okay, so it looks like we were successful in completing this group assignment. And I hope this gives you a better idea of how you would tackle finishing up and completing a group assignment that was shared to you through GitLab.